in the research I've been doing over the last two years, studying graphic design, trying to figure out what is happening with the evolution of web design. One day I opened up this book and saw this poster, Jazz at Lincoln Center, spring of 2007. And I immediately thought, wow, could I do that with CSS Grid? So the first step in implementing anything in CSS Grid is to figure out what is the HTML? What is this content? And you can see here that there are a bunch of events. Each of these events are in these pink boxes. There's a title, Jazz at Lincoln Center, and arguably a subtitle, Spring 2007. There's also this little bit about tickets and how to get tickets, where to buy them, where to call for them. There's a logo in the bottom left-hand corner. Of course, for the web, you don't want logos to be in the bottom left-hand corner, but for this exercise, I just wanted to implement the poster identically. Here it is marked up in HTML. I start with a body and a main element, and I've got an image, a header with that Jaws at Lincoln Center Spring 2007, and then really those events are a list, a list of events. So they really should be marked up with unordered list items. And there's also, if you couldn't see the poster, if you didn't see the layout of the poster, it might be confusing to know what is going on, what this list or what this content is. So I put here an H1 schedule of events with the intention of making it visually invisible for anyone who's experiencing the web page with CSS, but get it in there for everybody who's experiencing this web page without CSS, uh, because it's really helpful. It's helpful to have that header schedule of events. Um, and so I wrap that H1 in the UL into a section. That's my markup. Here it is all the way at the bottom. You can see the rest of this list. And then after I closed the section that is the list of events, I started a new section called a ticket info and put my information about my tickets in there. So that's our markup. Then I looked at this without any CSS at all, uh, which you can do by just not having a CSS file. You can also do that by, if there is a CSS file, like if you want to go inspect this example, you can just go into the inspector and erase the CSS or edit the URL to the CSS file and change it so that it's wrong and the CSS doesn't load. Um, but here it is, you can kind of see what our source order is getting us with the default styling that a browser comes with. Logos first, then this H1 and H2, uh, a schedule of events with its own header. You get the idea. So now let's start thinking about our CSS. I want to create a layout that's going to work for every browser and not just only browsers that have grid. So what I'm going to do is write a pretty simple layout for browsers that don't support grid, and then I'm going to override it with a layout that does support grid, that, that requires grid for browsers that do support grid. And I'm going to take that layout and I'm going to wrap it in this feature query of the at support statement. So we can see here this code, the basic layout for non-supporting, non-grid supporting browsers I don't have very much, actually. I put some widths on those list items. The ticket info section, I put a width on it as well. And then I took each of those items, each of the events, and the ticket info, and I just put a float on all of them. I put some margins on those. Uh, and you can see the result here, a basic float-based layout. Now, for those of us who've been doing float-based layouts for the last 10 years, you might immediately think, oh gosh, there's a bug, there's a float drop problem, all the boxes have different heights, and because of that, you need to clear your floats. And But then I thought, you know, I like it like this. Even though it kind of goes against the grain, it makes sense. It's a bit like our jazz poster, and it's, you know, showing jazz events. It's fine. It's good enough. You know, not a huge number of people maybe are going to get this version. 30% of my audience, not all 70%. I could spend or not all 100%. I could spend more time on this if I wanted to, um, but especially for this demo, it's fine. They get a layout, everybody gets a layout. This is a pretty good layout. Then in the CSS, I wrap, you can see that very first line on the top of the screen, at supports display grid, and this is the code that's going to run just for the browsers that have grid. The first thing I need to do is remove a little bit of the code that was for the browsers that don't support grid. So here I've got 
width auto and margin zero. Just take off some of those margins, set the widths back to auto, get rid of the set numbers for the widths. Um, that's going to basically undo the previous layout. You don't even need to take the floats off because if a grid item has a float applied, it just ignores the float. Um, and then I get into the code for implementing the grid layout. And this is the result. The browsers that support grid get this layout. And you can compare the two. Some browsers are going to get the layout on the left. Some browsers are going to get the layout on the right. Works great. I can ship grid today. So let's dig into the code. Let me show you how it is that I used grid. Uh, here I am I'm in Firefox Nightly because I want to use some of the newest CSS grid inspector tools and they're only available in Nightly. I'm going to hit inspect element and dig into my code. You can see here, here's all the HTML that I just talked about. This UL is one of my grids. I've got a grid applied on this UL. And then up here on the main as well, I have a grid applied. And if you didn't already know that, you could find that out by going in Firefox to this layout panel right here. So on this layout panel, I can see here that I've got a main and I've got a UL, and these are the two grids, the two places that I'm using display grid. And I can turn them on from here. So there's our unordered list grid, but let me change the color because that color is pretty hard to see. I'll make it a darker purple color. Um, and maybe we'll change this one to be more blue to make it really obvious which one is which. And we can see, so there you can see that I've got a four column grid for my unordered list and a six column grid for my overall main layout. Um, and here I've turned on the line numbers, right? So that helps us out. So let's look at how I did the layout on this particular grid. Um, we can see here the UL, I've got display grid, and I've said grid template columns repeat for 14VW. So this will make a repeated pattern of, of four times of one column of 14VW. So each column is going to be 14VW, which means 14 viewport units wide. And it, that, that pattern of one column is going to get repeated four times, which will give us four columns total. I also have here a grid gap of one VW, one viewport width unit, which is basically 1% of the overall space that's available because of the width of the viewport. Um, yeah, so fairly simple definition of the grid. The rows are going to be calculated automatically by the browser. And then this is a good example of a layout where I've explicitly placed each of the grid items. Uh, so here you can see this particular item. I've said grid dash row one slash two, grid dash column three slash four. So what does that mean? That means I would like you, browser, to take this particular item and put it between grid row line one and grid row line two, and also put it between grid column line three and grid column line four. This syntax, three slash four, means I want the start line to be line three and I want the end line to be line four. So it puts it right here between line three and line four. That's how we place this particular item in this particular cell. And then we can look at this one, and it goes from grid row two to three. See, from two to three. And it goes from grid column four to five. Here, four to five. So let's look at this one. We would expect this to go, it's going to go from column one to two, row three to four. Let's click and look. Yep, column one to two, row three to four. Look, happening what we think. And we can move this around. Like we could say we want this to start on two, and it's going to move it up. And we could say we want it to end on three. We could say we want this one to start on two, and we want it to end on three. Right, there's all kinds of ways. There's different ways to write the syntax, but this is one way. This is one of my favorites. It's the way that I chose to learn first. Uh, you can always get into the deeper complexity or all the other options later, but this is a pretty great, good way to start learning grid. So then I've got, so all of these events are placed on this particular grid, but what's going on with the rest of the page? So I've got this logo which is all the way down at the bottom of the page. I've got this title, this header here. I've got my H1 and my H2. And then I've got uh, 
this ticket information. So if we look at the ticket information, for example, the H4 and the paragraph are not being explicitly placed on the grid. What's being placed is this particular section. The way grid works, because we have a display grid on this main element, that anything that's a direct child of the main can be placed on the grid. So the image is being placed on this grid. Here, let's go turn it on the correct one so we can see the correct colors. This, um, here I am, I'm talking about the blue grid. So here's, oh, let's make it green, this green grid. So here we're talking about the green grid. We're not talking about the grid where the events are being placed. We're talking about the grid where these other things are being placed. So the main grid, the green, this teal grid, we've got this image, we've got this header, we've got the list of all the images, and we've got this event section down here. Things that are grandchildren, that are two levels down from the main element, you can't place those on the grid, not using display grid. In the future, we're going to have a tool called display subgrid that would let us kind of take a grid from one level in the DOM and suck it down into a different level and push it back up to the first top level and get it from a parent to a grandchild or a great-grandchild. But we don't have display subgrid yet, at least not in the summer of 2017. Hopefully it will come soon. Um, but until we do have that tool, we need to do what we're doing here, which is have two separate grids and nest them one inside of another. Now, I really wish I had subgrid. I could make a much more flexible, responsive, fluid design by having kind of one grid that's applied to multiple places in the DOM, but without that tool, my only choices are to either really mess up my markup and get rid of all of those list items around the events and flatten everything out, which would screw it up for screen readers. It would make no sense for SEO purposes. It would make no sense if in the future we decide to restyle this and we want to use the same HTML coming out of our content management system and simply adjust the CSS. That's a bad idea. So what's most important is to set the HTML, keep that HTML locked down, and then do the layout whatever, using whatever technique we need to. So that's why I have two separate grids, one nested inside of another. It's also why I'm using viewport units to size my grid, because I want these two grids to be identically on top of each other, and using viewport units seem to be the best way to do that. I'm still exploring to see if there might be another possibility, another way to get everything to keep its size, but without using viewport units, I wasn't really, I didn't have an, I, I couldn't find a way yet to do it. So that's why I'm using viewport units. And you can see here then, so uh, for example, let's look at this header. This is getting applied to grid column one to four, which means you know it's going from one to four. And it's going get, doing grid row two to three. And that's, you can see that it's in three cells. It's not in one cell, it's in these three separate cells. I also have an align self center applied, where I could say align self start, in which case it end up at the top of that space. Or I could say align self end, or it ends up at the bottom of that space. The reason that we have vertical centering here, and it's being centered in this space, is because of this alignment property being applied, align center. Alignment in the world of grid always goes in the block direction, and justify, like justify content, justify self, always goes in the inline direction. So here we wanted to go in the vertical direction, and that's the block direction in this particular writing mode. So we're going to use align self. So check this out. You can uh, go to labs.gensmans.com and inspect this example yourself. Uh, use the Firefox Grid Inspector to really get in there and see how I put it together. If you have a different version, a different a way that you think the CSS could be better, I'd love to see it. Post it somewhere and send me a link, and uh, maybe you'll give me good ideas about how to make this example better.